There's a lot of false information about National Electrical Code standards and requirements here on YouTube. And I think this misinformation coming from people claiming to be experts puts the viewers at a disadvantage. So I put together a list of the five most common false claims that I see, and we're gonna clear them up right now. Now the National Electrical Code is just that. It's a national standard. However, it has been adopted by all 50 states. Some areas will have a local code as well, but today we're talking about the NEC or the National Electrical Code. False claim number one, electrical pigtails are required by code. I see this one all the time. When we wire receptacles, we have two code compliant methods to choose from. We can through wire, which is when the incoming and the outgoing wires are connected through the device itself. Or we can pigtail, which is splicing the incoming and the outgoing wires together with tails that connect to the device. Both methods are code compliant. Now, some electricians get this wrong because they misinterpret code article 313B, which prohibits the neutral wire from connecting through the device on multi-wire branch circuits. A multi-wire branch circuit has two or more ungrounded hot conductors with voltage between them returning on a common grounded neutral conductor. A single circuit feeding outlets is not a multi-wire branch circuit and pigtails are not required. In false claim number two, ground up receptacles are required by code. The NEC does not specify receptacle orientation and neither do the receptacle manufacturers or NEMA. The only reference to orientation mentioned in the code is in article 4065G, which prohibits standard receptacles from being installed in the face up position in countertops or in the area below a sink which actually makes a lot of sense. A leak or a spill flowing into a face-up receptacle could be hazardous. But in all other locations, any orientation is going to be code compliant. In false claim number three, receptacle circuits require 12 gauge wire. Article 310.16 covers the ampacities or the current ratings of conductors. We size our wires based on the values listed in these tables. 120 volt receptacles in a home require 12 gauge wire for 20 amp circuits and 14 gauge wire for 15 amp circuits. But 20 amp circuits and 12 gauge wire are not required everywhere. In fact, article 21011C tells us the areas in the home that do require 20 amp circuits. Kitchen countertops, bathrooms, laundry rooms, and garages all require 20 amp circuits and 12 gauge wire. The fact is many 120 volt receptacle circuits in a home are 15 amp and they're running 14 gauge wire. You can spend the extra money and run 12 gauge wire for all your receptacle circuits, but it certainly isn't necessary and it's not required by the NEC. In false claim number four, a service loop is required by code. A service loop is the extra cable that we leave just outside outlet boxes in case something has to be moved the wires are damaged during construction, or they get cut short over the years. That extra slack can then be pulled into the box rather than having to extend the wires or to run new cable. This is not a bad idea, but it certainly isn't required by code. And as a matter of fact, it can be a code violation. Article 33430 tells us that the cable requires support within 12 inches of the box, but also within 18 inches of the cable length. This limits the extra cable to just six inches between the staple or the last support in the box. Larger loops will not pass inspection. But for the rare occasion when wires are damaged, Define rarely, frequently. <laughs> it sure would be nice to have that extra cable. So service loops are optional, but not required by code. In false claim number five, that device is not approved by code. Now I've seen this comment several times referring to devices and equipment that I've used in my videos, but the fact is the National Electrical Code does not approve or disapprove equipment. It provides guidelines and standards for the installation of electrical equipment and systems to ensure they're installed correctly and safely. 
In Article 110, it states that equipment that is listed and labeled, or both, shall be installed in accordance with the instructions included with the listing or labeling. For example, if a WAGO 221 connector was used in a wet location, but it wasn't listed or labeled for wet locations, that would be a code violation. But nowhere in the code does it state that specific devices are prohibited. If you want to learn more about residential wiring, click into one of these videos next. I'm John from Backyard, Maine. Thanks for watching.